Hello, I'm Anthony Lau, Technical Marketing Engineer at Cisco Systems. Welcome to the BNG Ambiguous VLAN with simultaneous PPPoE and IPoE subscriber demo on the ASR9000. Typically when setting up an interface to support PPPoE or IPoE, it would be done on different interfaces. One of the unique capabilities of the BNG uh, on the ASR9000 is we can set up uh, PPPoE and IPoE on the same interface. This is useful when a customer may be transitioning from uh, one type of network to another type of network. Another possibility is maybe a customer uh, has a need for uh, some PPPoE sessions uh, along with IPoE sessions and doesn't want to burn up you know, extra interfaces to do so. So let's start by looking at the class map here. As you can see, we have a class map for PPP and a class map for DHCP. And we have, we have that so we can detect the PPP packet versus the, a DHCP packet. Now we're going to take a look at the control policy that we have for this router. So now we're taking a look at the control policy called hybrid one. And you can see here that upon uh, event uh, session start, if it detects a PPP packet, it will activate the dynamic template PPP sub one. If it detects a DHCP packet, it will activate the dynamic template IP sub one. So now let's take a quick look at the interface itself. So you can see here that we have a single control policy for PPP sessions and IP sessions. We have XCS set up for PPP OE sessions and IP OE sessions. Here you can see the PPP OE sessions. We have 10 uh, sessions set up here. Press the play button and there it goes and all 10 sessions are up already. Now let's switch over to the IP OE sessions. And you can see here we also have 10 sessions. We're going to hit the play button and those 10 sessions should come right up. There it is. So now let's take a look at those sessions on the ASR 9K itself. So we do here, we're taking a look and we can see that we have all 10 sessions from the PPP side. And the 10 sessions from the IPOE side. And notice that they're both coming off of the same bundle Ethernet 100.1 interface. So here we can see that we have simultaneously IPOE and PPPoE on the same in bundle interface. Now on the second half of the demo, we're going to show you ambiguous VLANs. Typically this is used when a customer wants to do a one-to-one -one mapping between subscriber and VLANs. So normally what, what the user would have to do is they would have to actually configure a VLAN configuration for each subscriber, an inner and an outer one. This can be obviously very tedious, especially on a box that has you know potentially thousands of subscribers. So we're going to show you a much easier way through ambiguous VLANs. So next, let's look, take a look at the configurations for a one-to-one -one mapping between subscriber and VLANs. So we can see here on bundle interface 100.1.2.3, we have an outer VLAN of 302, an inner VLAN of 1, an outer VLAN of 302, an inner VLAN of 2, an outer VLAN of 302, and an inner VLAN of 3. So you can see this is kind of a lengthy configuration, and this is just three users. So here you can see our bundle interface 102. It has an ambiguous VLAN configuration. You can see here, here we have an outer VLAN of 310 and an inner VLAN of 1 through 20. Now you can actually have an inner VLAN of any or an outer VLAN of any as well if you wanted to. So with this one simple configuration, we could potentially support thousands of users on it. So now back on Exia, we're going to take a look at our PPPoE configuration for ambiguous VLAN. Again here we have 10 subscribers set up and let's take a look at the VLANs itself. 
you can see we have an outer VLAN of 310 and an inner VLAN that starts at 1 here and will increment uh, for each subscriber that's, that's negotiated. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the play button here to start that up and there goes all 10 subscribers just came in. So now we're back on our router. Let's take a look at the subscribers we just generated. So here are the first 20 that we generated earlier and then here on here there are the new 10 PPPoE sessions generated on bundle interface 100.2. And let's take a look at one of these more carefully. Let's take a look at um, bundle PPPoE number 11. So here you can see we have an outer VLAN of 310 and an inner VLAN of 1. Let's take a look at 12. And you can see we have an outer VLAN of 310, inner VLAN 2, and conversely, the 13 has an outer VLAN of 310 and inner VLAN of 3. Okay, so back on XN now, we're going to take a look at our DHCP for the IPOE sessions. And we're doing something a little bit different here. Here, we're going to have a 20, uh, 20 subscribers come in. Okay, we're also going to do a biggest VLAN here. So we're going to have an outer VLAN at 310. And an inner VLAN that starts at 11 and should go to uh, 30 since we have 20. But in our VLAN configuration, if you remember, we had a limit of maximum VLAN 20. So this one should stop at VLAN 20 and not allow the additional 10. So let's go ahead and start that up. And you can see here that it negotiated 10 subscribers and the latter, last 10 stopped. It would not let, it, let those subscribers come up. So now we're back on the router. Let's take a look at the subscribers we just generated. So here you can see the PPPoE and biggest VLAN subscribers we generated earlier and the new IPOE and biggest VLAN subscribers we just generated. Notice there's only 10 of the IPOE uh, and biggest VLAN uh, subscribers generated here because the other 10 are limited by the range command we had in. Also notice even with ambiguous VLANs, we they can be on the same interface. Now let's take a look at one of these interfaces a little bit more closely. So here we see our IPOE subscriber and it has an outer VLAN of 310, inner VLAN 11. The next user here, outer VLAN of 310, inner VLAN 12. The next user here, outer VLAN of 310 and inner VLAN of 13. So with that one simple ambiguous VLAN configuration, we could potentially support thousands of subscribers on there in a one-to-one -one mapping.